So, good evening and welcome to uh, the first meeting in a long time of the Planning and Highways Committee. Uh, so, <clears throat> turning to the agenda, firstly, apologies for ab absence, Madam Deputy Chair, no, Deputy Clerk. Um, apologies received, Chairman, from Councillor Foster, Councillor Cotton, and Councillor Walker. Thank you. So, declarations of interest. Mm, declarations of interest. Okay, so let me move on to the item that is longer than usual. Uh, approval of, uh, firstly, to have taken read as, as read and confirmed as accurate the minutes of the meeting uh, held on the 30th of November two, 2021. So proposed, Chairman. I have looked through them. I could, there's nothing that I can remember <laughs> that's in conflict with them. Thank you. Is it a seconder? I was okay. in attendance. So. Thank you. So, uh, all those in favour? Thank you. That's unanimous. So then we, we could receive and consider adoption of the, uh, the, the minutes of the Plan Planning and Highways Working Party meetings on those one, two, three, four dates. Uh, can I suggest that we uh, do them as a block altogether? I'm happy to propose. Thank you. And second, those in favour? Thank you very much. So matters arising from the previous meeting, I assume that will be. Yeah. <laughs> Anything? Yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have considered them yes. totally, yeah. but yeah. <clears throat> so from the previous meeting, um, the 22nd of February, um, we have um, Councillor Cotton reported that a road sign um, near mm. the roundabout junction for Way and Hartsdale Road had been dropping and recommending tightening the brackets. Um, so that was reported to West Berkshire Council um, and They've responded to us to say that the site has been inspected um, and that it is currently safe and they will arrange for work to be carried out in the new financial year. So, so. Anything else from anybody else? No? So, moving on to, I think this is a standing agenda item almost, isn't it? Um, parking issues in Thatcham. So, this uh, is we firstly carried forward the comment brought by Councillor Boyd to a previous meeting some time ago. Um, <clears throat> I've also uh, added um, Hennick Lane and Roman Way because I've received uh, comments from residents. Uh, uh, declaration of interest, Hennick, uh, I'm resident of Hennick, Hennick Lane, sorry. Um, well, I'm thankfully not personally affected, but. Um, so, um, the, the issue is what's called Francis Close, uh, which is the new development of some, I think it's seven, seven or eight houses and, and 40 flats in what was previously five or six properties. Um, and uh, the, the parking is mainly from them, but not, uh, I, I believe not only from them, I think some other residents on other urban roads park on the road. So uh, this is, the, and then if you scroll up, so, so the, the problem, the original problem was Barfield Road, which is a, a cul-de-sac that's fairly narrow. Uh, and it also extends uh, to uh, the start of Roman Way as well, if you pull, pull a bit further north there. And uh, there is some parking on uh, Hannick Lane itself as well. There are three marked bays just north of Francis Close. That's the one with the four cars in. Um, and, um, uh, and then there, there are double yellow lines on the corner of Barfield Road, um, uh, but only for a short distance. I think that's only for the step, the distance which the highway code says that you shouldn't park anyway, regardless. So, <clears throat> Councillor Boy, would you like to kick off if you can remember what the issue was raised? Um, it, yeah, the, the issue yeah. was uh, basically a, a mm -hmm. visitor who lives uh, yeah. down Barfield Road and, uh, asked me or just raised with me that yes. um, they, they felt that there are an awful lot of cars parking there making yes. it difficult um, mm. for, for entering and exiting yes. the road uh, safely yeah. that was the, the so there are actually two separate two aspects to this one, one is the parking by residents and the other one is parking by uh, visitors to the, the sports field tenant worthy sports field and i think we'll set that second part to one side for tonight because that's 
to do with the usage and therefore more an RNA matter and it's transient. So the long-term issues. Um, so as I say, I, I've also, I, I have been observing this for, well, I, I, I keep look at it every time I drive past, which is pretty much every day. So the parking on Farfield Road is, uh, there is some from residents further up. The parking uh, between the junction and the first house is largely people from else, from other, uh, from not, on, not residents on that road. They park about half on the pavement, but the pavement is wide enough that, um, except in cases of extreme antisocial parking, that it would be possible for a wheelchair to get past because the pavement is quite wide there. Um, you can see, I think there that you can see the cars parked half, halfway across, but um, the shadow, the, the fence is actually further away because you can see there's a shadow to the fence. Yeah. So, uh, and then we get parking on, on Hennick Lane, which um, generally also um, uh, par partly onto the pavement. If anything, that's more of a problem because the pavement itself is narrower. There's a grass verge, but the grass verge is a bit un too uneven for um, some wheelchairs to use. Um, and then you've got the situation on Merman Way. Same again, partly, partly on the on the uh, on the pavement in most cases, um, and generally not obstructing except when they park right up by a um, utility cabinet. Doesn't seem to have any any yellow lines at the uh, junction of Rome or on the the bend of Rome. No, no there aren't. Way. Um, Should there not be, uh, or is that as that? I, mean, I would say that given the, the, the for people living further south, that is a second preference. So I would say I haven't seen um, residents parking uh, uh, in in that area anyway. So um, it's not not not, not, not an issue. It occasionally happens during the sports sports events. Can I raise another thing? Parking on what I call the other side, the far side of the Henneclay. Yeah. Is there any provision? I haven't been up and down yeah. there for, for ages for vehicles to park on the verge uh, because there's a wide verge yeah. and then a footpath. Yes. If there's a shortage of parking, mm -hmm. they can either park completely on the yeah. verge or you convert the verge into yeah. off street parking bays. So Does that happen or is that since happened? that photograph was taken? So, um, yes. I think it was since that photograph was taken, uh, a row of trees has been planted along the verge by West Berkshire Council. Um, which prevents vehicles from parking fully onto the verge. Uh, that extends, I think, just short of Roman Way at the moment, and I believe there's an intention to continue that planting uh, all the way along. All the way down? What, what it, 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 start, it starts from starts from the junction, almost at the junction. Up to so the, they start, they planted from the junction, yeah. heading north, north yes. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, if there's a, a problem with parking, mm -hmm. why not have people parking? Yeah. Off, off the road yeah. instead of planting trees. There are mixed views among mixed residents views. about, about um, the, the trees, but I think the majority of people like the trees. In fact, um, yeah, to some extent that is displaced parking, but uh, I think that um, it, it was actually getting quite muddy in the winter anyway. Um, there's, it's also not quite flat. There's a very substantial park, isn't there, at the Tannic uh, Road, the sports field. Can, can we pan on yeah. to have a so, <clears throat> there it looks a bit there, but certainly when I go there, yeah. it seems big with plenty of um, yeah. parking. Uh, yeah. It's the problem then, there, so that gets full up, and so, so visitors are displaced to park. So, um, is that it? Well, that gets full up, full up and overflows from the, 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 the busy sports times, uh, generally, more weekend mornings. Um, but the gate is also locked uh, overnight to prevent antisocial behaviour. Um, and, and potentially at other times, so that that is not suitable as parking for residents. Um, not something we want to encourage because it would reduce space for um, for visiting clients as well. So um, I, so I think that this is one of those intractable problems that, uh, it, but uh, once the once the, the development has been built, there's very little that we can do about it, Councillor Boyd. Yeah, I, I was going to say that part of, part of the problem is, you know, the Barfield Road, mm. it's not just when there's events going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, the parking is yeah. down there all the time. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's being created by over 
um, populating that that yes that development there yes. where you've got all those flats yes uh, and really not the space yes. for them. So uh, um, yes, I think I'd say that the answer to, to, for, uh, for this particular case at this particular time. Uh, I think that is, uh, unfortunately, uh, there's nothing that we can do at this stage without just displacing the parking problem further away. Yeah. Um, if, if it were to become a problem of, of access to the road, then obviously that would be a different matter. Um, I haven't seen any parking that, um, that, that would prevent an uh, emergency vehicle or delivery vehicle going down there. I do keep my eye out for um, trades vehicles that park overnight, um, uh, which obviously take up more space. Um, they seem to use Ro uh, Roman Way rather than Barfield Road. Councillor Boyd. Uh, could I suggest um, that we have, which I know they have a lot in, in Newbury, residents parking only down Barfield Road uh, without the residents incurring the cost of That's whatever it is. £120 a year or something to park on their own street. I think that's a problem. The two go hand in hand, I suspect, for, for, for West Berkshire Council. Yeah. So, um, and the, the residents may not, of course, the, some residents may not wish that either. Yes. Uh, well, well, could I suggest then perhaps we um, do a letter drop down Barfield Road and offer this mm. as a solution once we've had a word with West Barks Council to see if that is something they might wish to consider. Mm -hmm. And then if the residents say, yes, we would like that, uh, and it's a price they're willing to pay, then we could go ahead on right. that particular route. So I guess that would have to go all the way along Barfield Road rather than yeah. just a junction, because there are residents who park on the road yeah. at the moment without difficulty further along. Yeah. Uh, Lily Crop. Yeah. Some time ago, Chair, you were, you were doing some research into the amount of space yeah. allocated Can to we... each Coming on to that bit. Oh, okay. That is um, part of, I think, 5B. I remember exactly the, the, the document, the combined document <laughs> under 5B, is it with the, the policy? Um, it's on the 5A, it's on the 5A. Yeah, if it's under 5A. Sorry, yes. Yeah, so uh, we'll come on to that, that aspect. So um, going back to the time of the local plan review, um, I had received a comment late during the local plan review and did some research and discovered that on the new local plan, the, um, the parking allocation for the outskirts of Thatcham was lower than the outskirts of Newbury because there were two, there were three, there were three groups and Newbury had one, two and three and we only had one and two across the whole of the, the town. So um, the councillors, the West, the councillors in Thatcham West very hastily agreed to a submission by the councillors. So the document 5A has got three things in it here, I think. So the first part is the current policy um, for the number of um, parking spaces uh, allocated per, per property uh, in the table, which you can scroll down, you'll see there. Um, obviously, as, as you go further from the center, then the number of parking spaces um, increases i think zone two is supposed to be 15 minutes walking which i suspect is more than your average person would would want to do in order to give up a car um, so this is the current policy um, if you scroll down to the um, the map okay so this is the map of the current areas in the current policy so uh, zone one is the centres of the two areas. Zone two is the pretty much the um, settlement boundary. Um, and uh, although it's not shown here, uh, if you scroll, do, do we have the the submission? Uh, the, the, I think the, the submission that we made is next page. Then next page. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, this is the submission that we made, so that the um, I think, in fact, you see that the, the, the allocation for flats has increased because it was 0.75 and it's now one for a single bedroom flat, which is good. So that would go some way towards addressing this. Um, but as I say, um, all of faction is in, apart from the centre, is in zone two, whereas the periphery of 
Newbury was in zone three. And that was the comment that we were making. So effectively for large parts of Newbury, the allocation for how the parking is higher than it for the small flats and it was in the Thatcher. Um, but obviously the, uh, the current allocation of 0.75 is inadequate. I think demonstrably because of the number of vehicles parked on the road. Um, so I, uh, I don't know if we want to make any further comment about the, perhaps we need to come back to this when we next have an opportunity to comment on the local plan to consider whether the, the, the this allocation is sufficient given our practical experience. Can, can I just clarify that there's no response from West Berkshire Council yet is that to, to the response we gave them to the local plan? Uh, well, this is this is a separate response. So this was the response because what happened was that the Fletcham Town Council agreed its response on many points, and that was agreed by the council. Uh, and that was about a week before the deadline. I only spotted this, I think, two days, but three days before the deadline, and got the agreement of the Fletcham West councillors to submit it in the name of the five of us. Okay. So this is a separate response on this well, only on this specific point. What's the, I mean, what's the the thinking behind um, if you've got one bedroom, you get 0 0.75 of a car space. Is that what this is saying? That's saying that that's in the one, one house. That's one? in that's in the central zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the idea is that if you live in the centre of the town, then not everybody um, uh, needs a car because they can use public transport. Um, that is the theory. I'm just wondering, 0 0.75 of a car. I think what it means is that, that some flats have cars and some flats don't. Oh, parking spaces. If you recall the discussion we had on the high street where the um, planning application had fewer parking spaces than the number of flats that were proposed, and that's how, how, how this is justified. Mm. Yeah. So I think we can be thankful that the, the allocation is proposed to increase from 2026, um, but I'm not sure if it, even though that will quite satisfy the, uh, the parking problems uh, from Francis Close. No. Okay, so I don't think, so we, we, we've got back to ask, the, I think the conclusion from that is to ask the council if, if they would be minded to, that's West Berkshire Council, mm -hmm. to consider if, if this would be appropriate for what, what their policy is on, on, um, on park, residential parking schemes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously, because we need to know what the, what, what the, what the conditions are. Um, before we go to anybody, go, go to residents. Thank you. Gotcha. Chairman, so the, the representation by the faction West Ward are yeah. prepared and done by your group. Uh, yeah. what, what, what date that's been submitted? That was submitted as part what, what of the date was that? Oh, that was January 2020, uh, 2021. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was part of the, the, con the consultation on the local plan review. It was um, January 21. Okay. Yeah. But that was part of the local plan review for 2026, so it wasn't actually addressing anything before then. So it would be presumably possible for the council to amend its parking standards before then, which to. Thank you. Yeah. Just looking at yeah. So there are two more under 5B, which were matters that were raised to, uh, to myself and Councillor Crumley at the um, surgery uh, in February. So I got uh, comments from uh, a resident relating to the junction of Dunstan, Dunstan Road and Marsh Road. And I think you had a comment about uh, parking in one of the small streets uh, off, off Church Gate. That was, that was, I think, taxis was. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, the, the, this is another of these these um, issues where there is um, uh, where there is uh, problems of insufficient parking. Now, both of these related in or the comments from the residents in both cases related in some ways to business vehicles in one case taxis in the other case visitors to a um uh to houses that were being used for business that was the, the one that i received um i just note here that i uh, while looking at other planning of uh, that planning appeal 
that there was an appeal made by a resident in Newbury over a, a rejection of a planning application, or in fact it was an enforcement case, where the, 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 the property was being used for business that was creating parking problems. And because the property had been converted for business use, then the, the council took enforcement action. Uh, and in fact, the planning of the, the appeal was re refused. So in that case, um, the resident could, um, if they think that there is um, unauthorised business use of a property, um, uh, uh, apply to or inform the Enforcement Department to West Berkshire Council. I don't think there's anything that we can ourselves do. I thought I should bring these to your attention as yet more cases. Uh, it's um, the other one, the... Um, the, the, the church gate was, was, was taxes, and therefore that's something that could be addressed by a letter to the um, company. If we, we'll have to look at the. Do we have any information? I mean, I, I would pass those votes on yeah. to the uh, club or class assistant. And I think that in, in the first instance, that would go to a different committee, wouldn't it? Or, so I don't know. If, if it, the, 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 the responses from surgeries. Would, would generally go to r and or to full council, I think. It depends. Yeah. What the, uh, That's we'll if we chase that, that comment, see what's happened to it and bring it back to the next meeting if, okay. uh, if necessary. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Anything else that we need to do on those points? I suspect that this will be a steady, uh, a, a, a repeating item on our agenda. Thank you. <clears throat> So then we're going to move on to agenda item six. That's the town, town clock. The bus service improvement plan. Yes. So I pop this one here because uh, I'm not sure that we um, actually received a copy of the bus service improvement plan. Um, in response because we responded to it, and this is in response to the Bus Back Better consultation. Uh, it was considered by members back in August 2021, but um, we've not received notification of the um, publication of it. So it was real information mm -hmm. that it's been published. It looks like in October 2021. Thank you. Does anyone have any comments before we note it? What is this? Is this is not the, the published. That's the published version. So, we, because we made comments, this is a plan as opposed to a decision. No, this is so we we that they that we commented on the draft of that document, right? But we haven't received the final approved document. So we're just now receiving the final approved document to note it. Nothing we can do about it. Is so it? This is not the final approved. That is, I think, the final in my pack. Final version for publication of DFT submission. It says on that. Oh, you're probably looking at agenda item seven, I think, are you? There are two different, two, two similar documents. All oh, right, sorry. Um, Which are you looking at? Well, it's got a bus station on it. Yeah, there, there are two. There are two. Do we've got two agenda items on on bus services. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so this is item seven. Yeah. So sorry item, about so that. item six. Yeah. So item six. Uh, if we just no, no, my copy. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't recall what comments we made. I think it was the yeah. the railway uh, line crossing, wasn't it? Or the yes, trying to bring that in. That point. Do, do, do we know if there's been any changes to what was the draft at the time versus this document? Okay, so then we then we come on to the second document. All right, I jumped ahead. Okay. Yeah. So um, we move to agenda item seven then. Thank you. So do we need to formally note this? I think this is to formally note this. Yes. Thank you. So, agenda item seven is um, a statutory consultation for enhanced partnership planning scheme and an update from West Berkshire Council. So, at the meeting on February, uh, it was considered um, the consultation for the enhanced partnership planning scheme, um, where Bretton Town Council submitted um, some comments via their survey. Um, this is just uh, for information mm -hmm. purposes uh, from West Berkshire Council. Um, and just stated that thank you for taking part. 
um, in the West Welsh Council of Harvest Partnership Scheme. Uh, thank you, of course, is, um, they have attached this document which identifies the update that they have made to this scheme. Um, and this is now going to start a bus operator objection stage, um, which will close on the 24th of March. Um, and then yep. I assume it will come back. So the, when, the, the reason I, I deferred the comment to this is, is that when we considered this document, um, we commented that both the services between Newbury and Thatcham and to the station were not very well served and um, could they at this stage uh, still improve them so this this was this this document is largely dealing with the the coordination between bus operators for the delivery of the plan um, so we were sort of statutory consultee but we weren't it wasn't primarily primarily addressed at us but we we made those comments in any case yeah I remember that yeah Thank you. So I think can we note this document as well? Uh, we don't have any at this point. We don't have any input. We're not, not able to make any inputs to the process. Thank you. I was noted. Thank, Thank you. you. Can we note that? Thank you. So moving on to planning applications. <coughs> so. <coughs> Unit four to five, the courtyard. Mm. Um, so we're talking about this here. Mm. Um, they are looking to change the use from a first floor commercial premises to a first floor residential dwelling. Um, so if we look at the existing ground floor and first floor layout. Um, so we've just got a bathroom in the unit, and restricted hip at the top. And then moving to the proposed, um, they're looking to change the access here to a flat above. Bin and cycle storage here. And then a kitchen, lounge, bathroom, and a bedroom to the top of the property. Um, the exterior um, doesn't look like it will actually change. So I think it's using the existing fabric of the building, um, possibly that one, no consent even though, not yet installed. Right. Um, no representations on it. Um, had a look at some of the other comments from other consultees. Um, environmental health suggested they look at it with regards to means of fire escape. Um, and highways were concerned it did not include a parking space in the application, it just says community zero spaces. Um, but they did <coughs> did say, however, um, the site is located within zone one. Uh, the application form actually states it's one. Um, two bed flat, but you can see from the plans that it is only a one mm -hmm. bed flat. Um, in this location, a one bed flat should be provided with 0.75 mm -hmm. parking space. It would be preferable if one car, car parking space is provided for this flat. Um, so, no, so it makes, sorry. Question, mm -hmm. Chair, Chair? Yes. I mean, this is a restaurant at the moment, ground floor and upper floor. There must be some parking around the back floor. You know, mm -hmm. staff coming and going and, um, and so on. But so there must be, uh, is there some existing car parking, some of which could be served service the, the flat upstairs? I suppose this is the <laughs> start of the restaurant. So, I mean, accommodation? I don't know what it is. 
you know, if it was business use, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be accommodation. It might be a small office or might actually be unused at the moment. But, uh, Thank you. The plan of the site is and you can see what's out. There's some parking as well. So this corner here, and I'm assuming parking is accessed around here. So there is considerable parking spaces around the back. Is it used to man the electricity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, that's my stop beside, was it? I thought I assumed it was the man then. No, it's on the back. Take away at the further, further back on the right. Yeah. Oh, I have got it quite on So it's very turning, turning to yes, the simple site. And it's not all right. Yeah. So it's uh, so it's four and five, is it? Yes. Yeah. So it's the upstairs of Mandarin calls five. ten and eleven then. Mm -hmm. And what is it at the moment then? Because this Sorry, I've seen that there's a restaurant on the corner, 11 and 10, isn't there? Yes. Cool. I think this is another, this is another restaurant. I can't remember what. It's, it's, a, it's a takeaway. A takeaway, yes. Indian, 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 Indian. Yeah. But four and five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an Indian. Mm -hmm. that, no? So it's not clear to me whether the, 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 the courtyard is in fact part of the parking area is in fact part of the, the property that it's likely to be, but it's not it's not in the yeah, red line. Yeah, I, I believe whenever I've gone down there, those that part, that courtyard, mm -hmm. uh, there's an opening straight into okay. um mm -hmm. into the, the shelves yeah. and stuff there. So yeah, that was yeah, for people who are coming back and yeah. picking up a Chinese or a yeah. Indian takeaway, they can mm -hmm. park there and oh, to the back. Yeah. Right. So, sorry, I, I would say I would assume, therefore, that the businesses would have allocated parking. Yeah. Associated with. Uh, mm -hmm. There's something we should know. I mean, this is supposedly a one bedroom. Was it one bedroom or two bedroom? Mm -hmm. no, the drawing showed one bedroom. One even bedroom. Though, mm -hmm. It surely raised the concern that. <coughs> There must be adequate uh, parking that doesn't appear to be at the moment. Otherwise, I don't so, yeah. So it, it, it's funny after talking about this 0.75, isn't it? So yeah, it, 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 this in this example though, I think it's probable, can't be certain that the, the residential would be for the people who either work or own the restaurants. Maybe you can't assume that. No, you can't. Don't, you can assume that nowadays. Okay, but I was, I was going to suggest that you know, if, if that was the person, likely they yeah. would have a car there anyway for during the daytime and it wouldn't yeah. increase the, yeah. the parking load. Um, Chairman, if I may just draw your attention to what's on the screen. So, this was the response from the highways. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they yeah. seem to um, approve the yeah. situation. So, right. whether we go back to so, uh, so uh, what were you doing? Can I break, break it into two two aspects? So, um, looking at the conversion itself and the parking aspect, because we could we can address the two separately. So, could I ask, does any do we have any objection to the conversion setting aside the parking for the moment? No objection. Okay, thank you. And do we have any? Do we wish to make any comment or objection to the provision of parking associated with that conversion? There should be at least one parking space. So, so, so can I suggest that propose therefore that we make no objection provided that a, a, a space is allocated for the for the plant? Yeah, yeah. I think that. No, I propose that. Councillor Crumley seconded those in favour. Yes, okay. Thank you. That is unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. So moving on to um, number two for Prince Hold Road. So for Prince Hold Road has come before us uh, once before. It was considered back in December last year 
when there was an application for a two-storey front and side extension. Mm -hmm. um, Thatcher Town Council uh, had no objections at this time. The West Berkshire Council refused the application um, on a number of grounds, which I do have the delegated report, um, which is why they rejected mm -hmm. Um, it, they've since resubmitted plans um, for a two side uh, mm -hmm. side side two story extension, mm -hmm. um, changing the layout. Um, so this is a lesser development than the one that we previously made no objection to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, and. <laughs> I think open countryside, um, <laughs> particularly, particularly um, stretching the imagination. It's, 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 um, it's not, it's not um, yes. the aroma of, uh, of um, cow waste. It, it, it's, it's incredible. I mean, it's the most discreet place possible. At the uh, uh, absolutely. I can meanwhile, the proposing two and a half thousand houses on the, and across the whole of the countryside. I mean, I had another look when I was walking past there last week because, you know, it seems to come up fairly regularly but it's it, it is well tucked away yeah. um it's it seems an ideal location um for, mm. for further development yeah. i would propose no objection yet again <laughs> second yeah i would agree with that as, as someone who walks past there from time to time so it is actually it is actually as a public footpath as well as well as a cul-de-sac yeah. even so it, as councillor lillicott says it is uh well very discreet. Well, fairly well hidden, well screened, that's the word. Yes. So, so, no objection. No, no objection. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> so, moving on to the um, three, which you uh, normally consider, have, they, have you received any objections from them? Thank you. So, we will not consider those three. So, we then move on to uh, items largely to note. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Madam Deputy Dan Clark. So, um, under planning matters, we've had notification of um, uh, appeal has been allowed and planning permission granted. So, there were two parts to this um, appeal, and for both of them, the appeal has been allowed and planning permission granted. Um, one of the applications was considered by the Planning and Highways Committee, and the other one wasn't. And at the time when it was raised in December 2020, Thatcher Town Council had no objections mm -hmm. to it for the uh, application. Um, so this is just to inform mm -hmm. you that uh, it has been granted. Jim, so, <laughs> I read through this and I noted at the end they were simply to note this yeah, yeah. information. Yeah. The things that I know just a little odd and confusing. Item A, 28 Chapel Street, not considered mm -hmm. by us. Item, if you like, uh, still A, so not B, but 28A, Chapel Street. Um, same result, but, but um, we had no objection. So, so, so there were two. Two similar applications on the same um, site. Am I getting it wrong? One, one we had a look at, and another we didn't. But in any event, they both both appeals have been allowed, and we're just told to note. Yeah, wonderful. wonderful. Okay, proposed note. Yeah. So um, to receive notes, uh, so that's item 9A, item 9B. So um, I'd like to inform the meeting of something that's come up uh, relating to planning matters, relating to the local plan, uh, that I learnt by an indirect route, in fact, involving Councillor Lister, uh, that it, uh, it has been reported in a specialist um, journal for the planning community that West Berkshire Council has granted a contract to a company to do the uh, work on the Thatcham vision, the Northeast, the vision for Northeast Thatcham for 30 years that was required. The, the report was 10 days ago, um, and we haven't heard anything about that, so which is rather, dis from, for, as a chairman, rather disappointing that we, did, we weren't informed. So obviously you haven't seen the details of this, 
Um, uh, but I think it's it's something which will be very important for the town council to be engaged in. So uh, in order that we can achieve that, uh, we weren't able to actually make any decisions tonight. Uh, I have arranged, subject to agreement, to have an extraordinary meeting of the Planning and Highways Committee next Monday, which would take place immediately before recreation and amenities for the purpose of agreeing a letter to be sent uh, to the uh, consultants to offering our support for the work, basically. The, name, the exact wording of that would depend on whether we'd received any communication in the meantime. Uh, yes. But and if we don't, are we still having the, the meeting? So the meeting, the meeting, well, I, I'm arranging for the meeting to be, uh, the agenda to be sent, to be the meeting to be called. Uh, if everything is sorted out by then, we can always cancel the meeting. Um, and but what we'd say might depend on whether we receive any communication from either the West Berkshire Council or the consultants before then. So the, 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 I'm suggesting that we we uh, well, I'm proposing that we that I've already signed signed the the calling notice for that meeting to enable us to respond to either initiate contact or to respond appropriately because we understand from the presentation that we received to the last full council meeting that this will be quite a brief uh, project and therefore it's important that we get involved as quick as early as possible in order that we can make but, a contribution. The chairman, that's six thirty next month, yeah. twenty first. Yes, it, yes. March. Yeah. So the the calling note, the the agenda will need to be sent tomorrow in order to meet the deadline for 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 notification for a committee meeting. There's still some doubt about uh, whether it takes place. To well, uh, if, if everything is resolved satisfactorily by then, uh, then it might be cancelled. But uh, I think it, it probably would be wise to make to make sure we have prov the, the provision to. To, uh, to to address anything that we need to at that point. I, I felt that it wasn't. It's something that we could wait for three, three weeks for. Yeah. So, so, so thank you, Chair. I, I think that sounds like a very sensible way forward mm -hmm. for an issue which is really super important for this community because this is setting out a thirty-year vision. Vision, and if I understand it correctly, it's not just the northeast Thatcham; it's for the for the whole Thatcham. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, has consequences across. I imagine transport and schools and GP surgeries and everything else which uh, involves the community. So, you know, I welcome the proposal that we have a special meeting to resolve our approach to the consultants. Um, I think anything we can do to encourage them to consult with our community is absolutely essential. And I do recall in a full council meeting when Brian Whistle um, met or presented an update of the local plan, he mentioned that this activity, the 30-year vision, would happen during February and March. Um, and it was an eight-week activity. And that's been on my mind because we're well into March and we haven't heard anything. And the danger is that this 30-year vision is signed and sealed without any mm -hmm. engagement at all. So uh, I, I welcome the proposal that we debate this next week and work out what responses the consultants. Yeah, and with that, uh... The agenda will also circulate the text of the um, of the article which, um, we, um, through which we learned of the, uh, the, the contract. Thank you. So look forward to seeing you again in a week's time. But <laughs> moving on to uh, agenda item ten, <clears throat> then. Um. Sorry. Traffic management pipeline yes. and road safety. Yeah, gone too soon. <laughs> um, so you will note on the agenda that we've been advised of two um, road closures. One, I think, is actually finished today. Um, so, uh, that was Bowling Road and Hennick Lane, 2330 yesterday and today. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Network Rail advised that Thatcham Level Crossing at Cookham Hill uh, will be closed on the 22nd and 23rd of March between hours of 10.15 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, the closure will be from its junctions with Station Road and Chamber House Middle Lane uh, carry out an annual review of the level, level crossing. Thank you. So, can we propose that we note those items 
Okay. 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 So, um, are there any other answers? Um, so, we received today a notification that St John's Road uh, in Thatcher will be closed on the 21st of March. Uh, between the hours of 8 and 5 p.m. Uh, this closure is to enable Volker Highways to carry out drainage investigation work on behalf of West Berkshire Council. Um, access will be maintained for residents within the closure and includes Rope Walk and St Mary's Close. So that includes Rope Walk and St Mary's Close. Thank you, Jolly, for closing. Um, I'm afraid I don't know who would want to visit it apart from residents. So. <laughs> Thank you. So can we note that one as well? No. no. Thank you. Note that. Uh, so moving on to decision notices. Objections um, from as much as approved. Um, there's a one on there on Six Times Street would be the comment. I think there was actually a revised plan that addressed that, which we then didn't, we were apparently we considered, but we didn't in detail. So I think our, our, our comments were actually taken into account in the final approved plan. Yeah. Thank you. We note those. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, that brings us to reports from town council appointees to outside bodies. So um, I think you, you sort of, Councillor Lillycrop, sort of uh, do, do, do this. Uh, no. Any update? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, schemes for North and East Thatcham. Um, uh, flood defences are proceeding, um, but there was some concern at the last meeting of the SWMP and the flood forum that things seem to be slowing up, um, and it's particular uh, of particular concern because we, uh, very large allocations of funds are put into these projects, and they are time constrained to some extent. There are there are restrictions on those. The money that comes from the uh, DEFRA, the Environment Agency, you know, whichever pot they come from. Um, and uh, it does, uh, it did feel at the last meeting as if there were some concerns that various departments within uh, West Barks um, were kind of not, not pushing these projects forward maybe as, uh, uh, as rapidly as, as they need to be. I, mean, I, I would ask through the chair whether Councillor Cromley actually, um, I, I think you had an action to try and find out which meeting of Eastern Area Planning the, uh, the two yeah. uh, schemes were, were coming to. Uh, yes, I did. I, I wrote to the appropriate um, uh, officer, um, Emma, Emma uh, Nicety or something like that, I'm afraid I can't remember the exact name. She did uh, re respond with the usual, I can only say the, the usual stuff, but uh, she was awaiting amended plans, awaiting consultation from environment or, or ecology. Uh, it's all probably, I'm not saying it's untrue, I'm sure it's all probably true, but it's a typical response you get from a planning official. They're waiting to hear from say three consultees before they can uh, proceed. I pass that on to um, is it Brian, uh, Brian Woodham, yeah. Brian Woodham, and, and said, in my, my recommendation would be a group of three from Swamp, uh, including say a local ward member, make a point to go and see the, uh, the, the chap in, in charge. In other words, the, the team leader of uh, Emma, and his name, name is Phil, Dr Phil Dre. Mm. And, um, that, that might be one way of getting the, this application to the top of the heap rather than the rather than at the bottom. Uh, Eastern area, they, they need planning permission to, you know, to proceed and get the funds. So uh, Eastern area meets every every three weeks. I think I can't remember the dates, but there's one by the um, by the end of March, and after that it's April, and so it goes on. Um, and uh, I think Brian was just. Uh, I probably just concerned that this would just poodle along without ever 
try to come into what your scenarios quickly as um, you would like. And that was my suggestion as a way of trying to push it along. Here was uh, on the skiing slopes at uh, is it Oberger from the moment? <laughs> when he received my email that said he would uh, be available as a solution I've got back. So I'm not sure if it would need to go to a scenario planning because that doesn't consider all applications. It may be because it's the council applying for itself that it does, but but normally I pray that I think when if the council is the uh, the applicant, okay. Um, um, when I was in my day, yeah. uh, I had it had to go to Eastern Mary. Okay. So <clears throat> I suggest that what the first step would be to check on the planning portal as to what the status is because that has all the time frames and would, would actually state. Uh, and what documents have been received. So be before approaching um, the offices, because if it's clear it's in progress uh, in the normal way, then um, th th we don't need to do that. But I'll, if, if I check, if I take an action to check that, and then come back to you, Madam Deputy Clark, if we think if it, if it appears that it's not making normal progress, but there is a, a set a set timetable for, for 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 the processing of the application. Right, okay. yeah, there is, but I think no, because it's only one meeting. Is it since we two meetings since we had meeting? Mm, it wasn't last yeah. one. It was the meeting. Before. Yeah, well, there was one at the last yeah. and one at the one before yeah. it. But the, yeah. that's that would if if the consultation period was open. Um, then I don't think it would have reached the, uh, the, the stage where they could conclude on it yet. So that's. There are dates, there are all the dates, all the, all the normal dates are on the website, so I'll, I'll check that. Okay. Um, the swap, the swap, yeah. no concern while yeah. so this moment could have been lost and planned and sent once in time. Yeah, oh, yeah but yeah. The point is, uh, they, 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 if, if, if it's running according to the, the, the normal time the, 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 the normal timetable, then, then there's no need to, to, to make a special inquiry, but if it appears to have got delayed, then, then we can. Okay. I'll, I'll gaze with the deputy clock to decide whether we need to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Reserve, reserve our intervention. If we do it, if we if we do it selectively, it's more likely to be uh, effective when we need to. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of the agenda, and therefore, uh, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you. And would you like to stop the recording?